Hello, it's me, Mel Byron, welcoming you back to another episode of Old Movies Save My Life. It seems like it's been quite a while, and I think it has, but I've been extremely busy getting prepared for the Edinburgh Fringe, which starts in but a few days' time. So it seemed appropriate that uh, my choice of movie today is actually set in Scotland. As you'll hear, I'm chatting to my friend and venue mate at the Edinburgh Fringe, Romina Puma. And we'll be talking about, well, you'll hear what we'll be talking about. But I'm very much looking forward to sharing this episode with you because it's probably the last thing I do before I pack my bags and go off to Edinburgh. So if you are in the area between the 3rd and the 25th of August. Come and see us. If not, just enjoy this and the preceding six episodes of Old Movies Save My Life and uh, keep watching the films is all I can say. So I guess now it's handing over to me and to Romina to uh, talk about... Oh yeah, I wasn't going to tell you, was I? Anyway, here we are. So, hello, good afternoon, and welcome back to Old Movies Save My Life. I'm Mel Byron, and today my special guest is comedian Romina Puma, comedian, comedy promoter, and star of her own show this year at the Edinburgh Fringe called All My Mother's Fault, and she'll tell you more about that, I'm sure, a bit later. So welcome, Romina. Hello, thank you for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. When I wanted to choose a film for you, you know, I wanted to choose something English or British, I should say. And so I gave you a choice and we, we, we plumped for I Know Where I'm Going from 1945. You hadn't ever seen this film before. Never. No. Would you watch it again? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, okay. It was interesting. It's, it's interesting. And it was only when we were sort of part way through it that it was a little bit of me thought, oh God, there's a lot of Scottish accents in this. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> there were some bits that I more or less got it, what yeah. they were saying, but I didn't understand all the words. Yeah. And sometimes they were actually speaking Gaelic, so I didn't understand, but you I, didn't need to know what they were saying. Yeah. It was more, more sort of authentic flavor so <laughs> so then I thought oh no we maybe we should have watched brief encounter but anyway so we did we, we, we wanted a love story so we've got a love story so just to summarize the plot for anybody who hasn't seen it it's about a young woman from Manchester who's very forthright very knows what she wants in fact she knows where she's going and she decides that she's going to marry a rich older man so she's going off to Scotland to marry him but she can't quite get there there's there's a storm and she can't get across to the island and while she's stuck waiting for the boat she meets a nice sailor and they fall in love but of course that's not part of the plan so she tries to run away from him but it all works out in the end yeah yeah so I think yeah. it's fair to say it has a happy Ending. ending yeah so you know we've spoiled that one for yeah. the ladies and gentlemen but I, I mean I love this film and I, I love it because you see different things in it each time I've seen it loads of times oh. but I really really love it and I don't know what did you think did, no did it was it? it was yeah no mm. I liked it it was really really not I, there were many points where it was actually even funny it yeah was very funny yeah. yeah and there's some great characters in it like the colonel with his eagle yeah and, and, i mean it almost doesn't he almost doesn't have anything to do with the story but he's he's just an interesting side character yeah and 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 a real english eccentric so yeah. you get the sort of full gamut of englishness and scottishness and I just I love this film. I love this film. Yeah, yeah it's it's really nice. And um, well, I always when I when I watch a film, I I always pay a lot of attention on the acting or like how could it be if the story was turning in another way or or like this one here is from 1945. You said and while we were watching it, I said, oh, this is it was based on today uh there wouldn't be a problem for the storm he, if he is so rich he would have an helicopter so problem solved so an hour and a half film would be short in 10 minutes <laughs> there you go so so many stories yeah. could be yes i was watching i was watching the film uh Love Affair which is made in 1939 recently with a friend and in the story the woman gets 
They're supposed to meet at the top of the Empire State Building and they don't because the woman gets knocked out. And my friend said, well, surely, um, if you imagine if they made that today and there was social media, there'd just be something on Facebook saying, oh dear, have you seen she's been knocked down? And then he would find out what had happened. And so most of the film wouldn't need to happen. So social media. And, and did you see there's a wonderful scene in the film where she wants to speak to him. So they go to the radio to the Coast Guard station and there's this huge radio with big buttons and she has to say, I'm here, over. And, yeah, no, it just and it's be... hilarious that when she's got the last line and that she's passing it over to the guy, the she press the buttons, <laughs> I've got it now. I'm in charge here. <laughs> yes, he's here and he's not in the army, he's in the Navy. Up goes there the buttons. Go. <laughs> no. Now she'd just be Skyping him and showing him, look at the weather outside the front window. So yeah, but the then it would have lost its charm. Uh, yeah, and but probably in those islands there won't be that much internet connection. Probably up in the going highlands. around in the island. Where is the signal? Where is the signal? <laughs> up in the highlands and islands of Scotland. That's true, actually. You probably have to go and stand on the top of the mountain. On one leg. You... <laughs> yes. It's leaning over. And the finger in the, in the mouth. <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> That's so true. That's yeah. so true. Yeah. They might still be a little bit behind the times just because of the signal. Yeah. Not because not because the Highlands and Islands of Scotland are backwards, please, Never. ladies and gentlemen. We are not suggesting that no. at all. I love the film. I wish I wish I could partly wish it wasn't in black and white because I think the countryside is so amazing. Yeah. I and think you lost a yeah. bit of a uh, uh, picture in uh, having a black and white but you know you, you know that it's black and white you try to think what the colors would be do you do that do you try yes. and imagine what colors yeah. but some people can I've, I've heard this do you think it's true some people say oh i can tell that's red just by yeah. the shade of black yeah i think I, I, i'm not 100 percent sure because it was many many years ago but i think it was some sort of a documentary that i was watching where they were saying that it depends on the shade of the of the black and white that you see. They can tell what color it is. To me, it looks all the same. To me, it's, it's various <laughs> shades of grey yeah. and some black and some white. And C equals 50 shades of grey. Yes. <laughs> but there's none of that in 1945. No. <laughs> so there's nothing naughty no. going on in this. Well, one. although the guy was quite... Quite touchy. He was a bit touchy, yeah. Phoebe, but probably because he's Scottish and not English. That will be it. That will be it. Yeah, yeah. because I think Brit English people are more. Well, did you to... notice at the end when they're they're going uh, when they think they're going to get on the boat and he says goodbye to his friend Katrina and she's only his childhood friend and they probably were childhood sweethearts but she's married to somebody else. He kisses her full on the lips. Yeah, I and, was shocked. Uh, yeah, yeah, me too. And and I've seen other... Because an Englishman and an English woman who were platonic friends, I don't... I, I can't think of an instance when no. I've seen somebody do But did this. you see her face? Who, the girl? The, the yeah, girl. the girl. She was she really... Was like, what? Yeah, yeah. And she was jealous. I mean, she yeah. was in love with him. So yeah. she, she doesn't want to be in love with this sailor. But she is, yeah. but he doesn't have any money, and oh, oh. But his friend, I mean, she, I love her. I love um, Katrina. She's really, she's, mm. she's very striking. Yeah. And there's that scene where young Bridie comes to tell Joan off because for taking the boat uh, yeah. when in the storm. And you just see Katrina's face, and it doesn't move, and it's just like it centers the scene. She is a really, really strong character, although we don't see very much of her. Yeah. So it's like the women in this are quite strong, yeah. because it's the the young man who she persuades to take the boat across the water, even though it's dangerous. It's and his girlfriend. She, yeah, who comes, she, she gave him twenty pounds. She gave him twenty pounds <laughs> so he could get married. But his girlfriend says, "Look, I don't care. Yeah. I don't want him to. Die. I'd rather yeah. have him. I don't care about your twenty pounds." So she comes and tells him off. It's Katrina who looks after them. It's um, they go and visit that lovely lady who owns the big house at Achnacro. She's a very strong woman. There's lots of strong women yeah. in this, and I think that's why I like the film so much. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's it's nice when there are strong characters mm. uh, the female yeah. characters yeah because it usually is it's not something that you see so often especially in a film that is from the 45 
usually, yeah. it, you know, of course you can know that they're going to get married at the end, but it's usually the woman who has had to make some horrible sacrifice. She's somehow inferior. And even though she did change her plans in the end and it was her choice, she did. he didn't tell her to. Yeah. Um, you you but kind of he, thought she hadn't lost anything. He, he had a castle anywhere. A big broken castle. Yes, yeah. Well, you know, what should be of grand design? And, and then she... <laughs> Plus, he owns the island that yeah. her boyfriend is living yeah. on. So, I mean, I don't think he's just renting it. No, he's not that poor, but he's okay. not as, as rich as the, the rich boyfriend who's rented the island. Yeah, but that's given him some money. He doesn't have a helicopter. So. He doesn't, neither of them so. have a helicopter. <laughs> but it is 1945, and it's yeah. the tail end of the war. Yeah. So, I think civilians <laughs> buying helicopters <laughs> <laughs> might not be an option. <laughs> it might not be an option. Um, yeah. I mean, any other thoughts on the film? What is anything that struck uh, you? Uh, 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 it was hilarious for me in the beginning when they were showing all the different ages of her uh, since she was uh, basically a baby, yeah. she was still crawling. She knows where she's going, <laughs> crawling away. <laughs> and then when she was 12, uh, she knows where she's going. <laughs> And then when she was 20, she got her first tights and she knows where she's going. Okay, more, more, I think more than she knows where she's going, she knows what she wants. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think the title is a bit misleading. Yeah. <laughs> it's less I know where I'm going, the more yeah. I know what I, I want. want. Yeah. yeah, And she does, and that's why it's so horrible for her when she meets the sailor, because yeah. it's the first time in her life she now doesn't know. She was sure she knew what she wanted. Yeah, but she was trying to uh, reject this feeling. Mm. Said, no, this is not what I want. I know where I'm going. <laughs> but she would have been so miserable if she'd married the rich yeah. man. Now having experienced true love yeah. with her lovely sailor. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I learned a couple of things uh, out of this. Uh, that she calls her dad... Uh, darling, isn't it? It was a darling. Oh, darling, it sounds so weird <laughs> to me. If I think calling my dad darling, he would look at me. Are you okay? <laughs> we would never call our father in Italy darling. Yes, we, we probably should point out in case anybody yeah. didn't notice ah, yeah. that you are in fact Italian, which is one of the reasons why we wanted to watch a British film, an Italian living in Britain. Yes, I, I mean, I, and I think I said to you at the time, I think in the sort of upper classes, mm. people did call other lots of people darling. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, it doesn't sound weird if, if for instance, I call you darling, that it, it's okay. It's call it friends, a parent. But a parent, darling, it sounds really <laughs> weird. <laughs> it sounds weird. It sounds weird to me. But, you know, it's normal here. Okay. I, I'm trying to think, because... Uh, do people do it more? I'm sure they do. I'm sure that people do call the pit, but it would seem to be more of a, to me, it was quite an, a, a class. You know, we're so class conscious. Yes. And, and in yeah. this film, of course, Joan is clearly very middle class, mm. but she has ambitions to be upper, upper class. class. You know, her father's a bank manager. Yeah. Um, and even though it's set in Manchester, the beginning is set in Manchester, and her father, clearly, you can tell from his accent that he is Mancunian. She doesn't sound Mancunian at all. She's no. frightfully, frightfully posh. And in fact, the actress who played the character, Wendy Hiller, was herself from just south of Manchester. Oh. And so clearly she went to some... went Came from... I'm trying not to be classist. Came from <laughs> a, a class in which she didn't grow up with a typical Manchester accent mm. and that she obviously went to school where she, you know, she learned to talk like that if she didn't learn to talk like that at home. So she doesn't sound Mancunian at all, no. but her father does. So mm. maybe he's the one who's given her this ambition by sending her to a posh school or Probably, something. Probably, yeah. And then the, the other hilarious bit, obviously for a foreigner, is... When they say, how do you do? And then they reply, how do you do? But would they ever answer how they really do? Yes, this was news. This was completely new to you, wasn't it? And people don't say, how do you do now? But it's, it wasn't actually a question. The, the answer to how do you do is, how do you do? It's, it's like saying hello. And that was, but nobody says, how do you do now? No. We just, we just don't say it. And it's, it, 
it's it's that very English thing of how are you? Oh, I'm fine. Because you don't actually want to know how do they do. You just don't, <laughs> we don't, don't care. We don't care. We, you know, this, this, the strict answer nowadays to how are you is fine. If you go, well, now mm. you ask. I haven't got time. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, deep down, we don't really yeah. care. We do care. We do care. We're not horrible. But but we don't. No, we don't. Yeah. We don't care. No. There is a, there's a kind of, it's like that standard greeting. Yeah. And the standard greeting was, how do you do? Yeah. To which you said, how do you do? Uh, and it, it didn't have a question mark at no. the end. Uh, I don't know how that evolved, but that's how it was. But like, you know, when I, when I first moved here, um, you know, sometimes it, it happens that you bump into someone that you know in the street. And I say, hey, how are you doing? And they say that while they're passing by, and they don't actually stop. And they say, how are you doing? I say, yeah, I'm okay. And I'm turning and say, I'm, I'm answering to your question. Yeah, again, I don't think it's a question. I don't yeah. think it has a question mark. But like in yet. Italy, mm -hmm. if you bump into someone you know, and they ask you, hey, how are you doing? You stop and you make a conversation. You spend at least 20 minutes there. Otherwise, if you haven't got time, hey, bye, yeah, I haven't got time, bye. Oh, but so you say you address it, then yeah, you can't stop. You're honest about yes, it again. Yes. Uh, and here, I, it, it took me a bit to, to but I met at the very, very beginning when my English was terrible. Uh, I remember I was working at a restaurant and uh, I had uh, one of my colleagues, he was Italian, and, uh, and I, I was there, you know, waiting for, for something. And um, another colleague came over, she was an Italian, she came, and she went, oh, how are you doing? And, uh, and I got that completely wrong because I heard doing, doing means that you're doing something. So I said, oh, I'm just waiting for the order. I said something like that. And she was looking at me uh, a bit confused. And then my Italian colleague said, no, she means how you, how, how well are you? I said, not what are you doing, how are you doing? Oh, and I looked at I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> and I carried on. Which is yeah. the correct answer. Yeah. And the only acceptable answer <laughs> yeah. to how are you doing is I'm fine, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> it is the only acceptable answer. Yeah. So don't make this way. But if you want to say how do you do to someone, how do you that's do? okay. But yeah. expect the answer, how do you do back? And now I know. Now you know. So <laughs> so so it's a learning experience. I'm a great believer that film is a great educational medium. It and is. I think you've learned a lot here. You saw Scotland, you've never been to that part of Scotland. No, and yeah. you should go. I have to tell you, I did go to the Isle of Mull where the island that they're stuck on, the big mm -hmm. island, is yeah. called Mull. And I once took my husband there on holiday and didn't tell him why I wanted to go. I just go, oh, let's go look at this nice place in Scotland. Oh. And I didn't tell him it was because I loved the film I Know Where I'm Going and I wanted to see it. And did you see the sign? Yes, we went to the, the Western Isles Hotel where they stay when they mm -hmm. go to stay in the hotel. Yeah. We went there. We didn't stay there because it was really expensive. We went to Moy Castle. Mm -hmm. And there was somewhere else. Oh, I think it's at Sawn Castle. We oh, actually yeah, saw yeah. it from a boat where the the, girl, the people with the little girl, yeah. Cheryl, yeah. we saw it from a boat. But the it Shirley was, Temple cousin. Yeah, <laughs> oh, but a malevolent Shirley Temple <laughs> cousin with glasses. Yeah, I'm an intellectual. Uh, so we went, we went there and I just wanted to be in the same place, yeah. you know, because I love the film. But it is, it's just so beautiful there. It's yeah. just so beautiful on the Isle of Mull. And it really is quite easy to get to. Get, <laughs> so you just get a not nice, so not so difficult. You just get a nice boat from Oban to Mull. But that's where they got stuck on the island of yeah. Mull. And it's just lovely there. Mm. It went through a period of being very popular because there was a kids program set there called Balamori. Okay. And so loads of families would take their children there. Nice. And the, the lady, we, we stayed in a B&B &B and the lady who ran it, she said, I'm, I'm done. No more families. No more small children. Because <laughs> the kiddies were going, oh, please, mummy, take me to Balamori. Yeah. <laughs> and so mummy and daddy would take them to Balamori. And, uh, but it is, I, I can highly recommend the uh, islands and islands. But my, actually, my plan, that now it, it went out the window, but because my friend, now she, she's got a boyfriend, so uh, <laughs> bye. Bye-bye uh, uh, <laughs> to plans. Yeah. But the actual plan was that she was coming up to Edinburgh at the last few days, and then from there we would rent a car and uh, 
you know, and go. drive around. Yes. Oh, superb. That was the plan, but I think he just. It's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not gonna oh, happen. that's a shame. <laughs> So overall, um, I guess that was your first experience with it. Was that your first experience with an old British movie? Yes. Okay. Would would you, you so you would watch it again? Maybe just to pick up other things you. Yeah, like. or maybe I will watch another of those you suggested. Yeah, I I, I would recommend definitely if you want to watch a a, a real repressed British love story, <laughs> then you have to watch Brief Encounter. Encounter. You just have to watch it. It's but it was. Yeah, it, it's just so repressed. Uh, and, and unlike this, which does have a happy ending, that doesn't. So I've spoiled that too now. So it's just been this... Spoiler alert! Yes, spoiler this, alert. this whole, the whole podcast is about spoiling your film-watching enthusiasm. So, Romina, before we go, I have to ask... Um, just tell us now, I mentioned you've got a show called All My Mother's Fault. From the 3rd of August until the 25th, I'm going to be there every single day. Yeah, me too. We're actually yeah. next door to yes. each other, aren't we? And you're, you're just slightly later than me, so I can come and see your show. Yeah. So you I'm going to look forward to, to seeing its evolution. So um, what venue would that be? Would that be Jury's Inn in Edinburgh? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's you, right. That's right. And, and ladies and gentlemen, marvellous things. You can come and see me at ten past five and then go straight away into your show at... It's at five past six. Five past six. Oh, okay. It might be a bit tight to see us both on the same day. But you could come back the next day. It's yeah. fine. Yes, it's fine. absolutely. So we look forward to that. Well, good luck with that. Now, if, if people want to look up where, you're, where you are, what you're doing, have you got a Facebook page? Yeah, are you, the, it's very easy to find me because all my pages and stuff is all Romina Puma, mm -hmm. like the cat, meow, meow. <laughs> That's me. Uh, yeah, so I've got a website that I update regularly with all my gigs, so you can see all my things there, or if you want the more up-to-date thing that I'm always posting if I have a last-minute gig, either Twitter, Romina Puma, or Facebook, Romina Puma Comedy, and yeah, that's all my... I haven't um, got Instagram and all that kind of I don't thing. I'm terrible on pictures. So. I don't understand Instagram. <laughs> I don't understand it. And also you put me to shame now because I don't have a Facebook comedy page or a website yet. But I am going to build one because I would like to put all the episodes of this marvellous podcast on here as well. And obviously promote my show, which is also called Old Movies Save My Life. So... From me and from Romina Puma and from the makers of the 1945 classic, I Know Where I'm Going. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, look us up, uh, follow us. Um, you can find out what we're up to. And until the next time, it's goodbye from me, Mel Byron. And from Romina Puma. Bye. Bye.